Hello friends, I hope the quarantine is still treating you all well. Today I want to share with you something that certainly spiced up my quarantine. Today we're looking into Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles, which is a fanfiction supposedly written by a Christian mom named Grace Ann Parsons who was worried that Harry Potter, the original Harry Potter, would turn her children into witches. That is a no-no, according to Jesus. So she decided to rewrite it without any of the fun stuff. For this video, I went back to fanfiction.net for the first time since middle school, and it felt bad, can confirm, did not feel good, did not feel organic. My original concern was that I was going to have to reread the entirety of the Philosopher's Stone, like m meticulously edited to like change everything to be Christian. That was not the case, I was pleasantly surprised. It turns out this thing is only 1300 words, 13, not 1300, 13,000 words, which I wrote longer fan fiction in middle school, so get on my level, Grace Ann Parsons. So naturally all of this sets off the troll alarms immediately. There's a lot of people out there claiming definitively that this is a troll and that it has been confirmed. Apparently there's something in the last chapter that may be a confirmation, but I've actually only read half of it. This is a part one. I took this quote from TV Tropes right here. Due to the over-the-top writing, it has been suspected to be a parody. The last chapter may be read as confirmation of this, but it is open to interpretation. The author claims to have ended the fanfiction after 14 chapters because her husband felt that writing was not good for the family and has never confirmed the suspicions of the story being a parody. I looked around a lot and I could not confirm that this is a troll. Obviously, it's very tempting just based on the content of it to say that it's a troll, but as a connoisseur of terrible books and of Christian bullshit, there's, there's no way to tell. I have read worse than this in Onision's books, and I have read worse than this on the Girl Defined blog, and those are both 100% unironic sources. While it is so easy to read this and think nobody could possibly be serious about this, experience, experience has proven otherwise many times for me. This is presented as serious, and we have no concrete evidence otherwise, so I am going to cautiously treat it that way. Before I get into taking you through this absolute literary masterpiece, I have to tell you about this week's very fitting sponsor, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Every month you get a credit towards one free audiobook, and those books are yours forever even if you cancel your account. You also get access to two free Audible originals every month, as well as news and guided meditation programs. I am a huge reader, and for a long time I assumed that the the, the physical reading experience would be superior to the listening experience. I can tell you now from experience, having listened to so many books that I have absolutely loved just as much as if I had read them in a physical copy, that is not true. Audiobooks are fantastic. If you're looking for something to read, I do highly recommend the His Dark Materials series. And you can get all three books in the series over on Audible. So go to audible.com slash strangeons or text strangeons to 500-500. Start your exclusive 30-day free trial, including one free book and two free Audible originals today. So without further ado, let us jump in to Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. This lady gets right down to business. We immediately meet young young innocent Harry and his Aunt Petunia, a career woman who wears unflattering pantsuits, and Uncle Vernon, her brownie baking soy boy husband, and of course Hagrid. Hagrid, the door-to-door -door preacher, a, a beloved character that we all know so well. Hello, neighbor. I was wondering if you've been saved, Hagrid exclaimed brightly, and tipped his wide-brimmed straw cowboy hat. Aunt Petunia laughed, laughed a gravelly laugh, and leaned forward on her sturdy practical boots. Never trust a woman in sturdy practical boots that she wears inside her house for some reason. Saved? Don't tell me you are one of those Christians. Harry did not know what that word meant, but Hagrid's smile was the most peaceful smile he had ever seen. It made Harry feel warm and happy inside. Just seeing the glowing radiant grin on the kind friendly stranger's face. You're telling me I'm supposed to interpret this one way, but the vibes are something entirely else. This is terrifying. I am terrified. <laughs> he, want, he wondered why Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon did not smile like that, dot dot dot. Yes, I am, Hagrid replied kindly. Are you? Aunt Petunia laughed again and stuck her pointy sharp nose up in the air. We are too smart for that. Haven't you read Dawkins? God is dead. Dawkins proved that. Would you like us to educate you on the Dawkins? What is a Christian? Harry queried innocently and scuffed his shoe on the shaggy yellow carpet, which had not been vacuumed in quite some time. Reading Dawkins is a slippery slope to never vacuum in your house. You, you heard it here first. Aunt Petunia snapped her hands over Harry's young ears, and her voice was sickly sweet when she said, Thank you very much for your concerns, sir, but he does not need your religion. He has science and socialism and birthdays. Haven't you heard of evolution? And then Hagrid's like, why don't you prove evolution is real? And she can't. And Hagrid's like, well, checkmate, atheists. And Harry's like, oh my god, you're so cool. I want to be a Christian. I want to stress here that the implication is not that Aunt Petunia personally doesn't know how to break down evolution and explain it to Hagrid. It's that evolution 
is in itself a religion with just as little evidence as Christianity. So that's cool and great. And then Harry says a prayer, which he somehow knows just by not knowing what a Christian was like 20 seconds ago, and now he has become, through the magic of prayer, a Christian. Chapter 2, Harry finds out about Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles, and decides immediately that he wants to go there. Hagrid beamed widely. He had been praying so hard to save a soul today, and he was so happy to have saved the soul of such a sweet, earnest little one. Poor boy being raised by two parents who were not Christian, and who both went to work and left him with a babysitter all day long. It was a good thing Hagrid had got there in time. Five years down the road, Harry might have been a fornicating, drug-addicted evolutionist. Don't be silly, Harry, Aunt Petunia commanded, and wrung, and wrung her long, bony hands. Come back inside, I will read to you about evolution from the Dawkins. <laughs> you don't need that silly religion. Harry's like, I don't think so. Evolution isn't real, and I'm going to Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. No, no, Harry. Aunt Petunia screeched desperately. I have an idea. You can have a second birthday today. You like birthdays, right? Birthdays are not of God, Harry verbalized knowingly, and looked at his aunt with an innocent wisdom. You tried to corrupt me, but it did not work. But I forgive you, Aunt Petunia, because of Luke 2334. <laughs> Somehow this woman made the Dursleys better parents. Like, his 11th birthday is so significant in the books because it's an example of how little they give a shit about him. This Aunt Petunia is obviously a ridiculous caricature, but I like her so much better than the Aunt Petunia in the actual Harry Potter books already. Also, no, you did not miss anything. Harry quotes the Bible, despite not knowing what a Christian was 20 seconds ago. Also, if this is not a troll, I feel so bad for this woman's children. This woman literally thinks kids are that dumb. She has so little faith in the intelligence of children that she thinks Harry Potter would turn them into witches. I'm just... I am just so afraid of the type of people that exist out there. Hagrid raised his hands to the heavens and cried out in a deep, thunderous voice, Dear Lord, take us to Hogwarts. And then they are teleported through the magic of prayer outside of the castle, and who is there to greet them but the Reverend Albus Dumbledore. And he is like the Albus Dumbledore of the books, except not at all, because he is young and a cowboy and has a southern accent. She keeps describing Harry's impression of all the Christian characters as so pleasant and peaceful, which is spo obviously supposed to, you're supposed to read that and be like, hmm, inner peace? I'd like some of that inner peace. I might try out some of this sexy Jesus stuff. But it just reads as so jarringly creepy. If you describe someone as smiling peacefully, I am going to think that this is a horror book. Chapter 3. Dumbledore is married to McGonagall, obviously, because family values. I also looked at some of the reviews for fun. A lot of these are really recent. Like, this one says, a like, this one is April 1st. Like, pe people are reading this. So anyway, this person said, strange how so many people in the comments are complaining that Dumbledore can't be married to Minerva or be religious slash conservative since he is gay. Well, duh. Are you guys 12? Throughout history, homosexuals have married with the opposite sex. In this story, it makes perfect sense that Dumbledore is married to a woman when he is the head of a super conservative and religious community. Do you honestly think that he could be openly gay in this community? Obviously, there's debate as to whether gay Dumbledore is even canon. This woman clearly has no regard for the canon, first of all. She's obviously made him straight. But second of all, I do think that that's... That's very true and valid. And if anyone's going to be gay, it's probably going to be the very repressed leaders of a big religious organization. Anyway, back to this harrowing tale. This poor little one has been raised in a terrible situation, Hagrid declared concernedly. He was watched by a babysitter every second of the day. His aunt saw him as part of her perfect like life package, like the big house, the fancy career, and the speedy car. Dumbledore shook his head sadly. Too bad no one told her. Parenting should be about children, not the parents. That's why it's called parenting. Hagrid nodded wisely. <laughs> okay, that's really nice and subtle, thank you. So much faith in the intelligence of the audience, like I said. She took the characters from Harry Potter, deleted their personalities so that they were just empty shells with the same names as Harry Potter characters, and then she filled them with Jesus bullshit. What a fulfilling reading experience I am having. She's a better writer than Onision, though, I'll give her that. Dumbledore is like, well, you're starting class tomorrow, Harry, but in the meantime, you should come have dinner with me and my family. And at this point, I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna have like eight annoying kids, isn't he? And Harry's like, wow, I've never had a family dinner before. Why don't you come with us then? Dumbledore cried kindly. <laughs> Strange dialogue, first of all, because you already invited him. You already said that he was coming. And secondly, for a moment there, I had a horrified moment that I had somehow ended up reading My Immortal. They totally still do magic in this book, except they have to pray for everything. They apparate everywhere, inside of the castle, might I add. For no reason, the food, the dinner food still magically appears. They just say, hey, hey God, and things happen, which is so cool and just as exciting as the magic in Harry Potter. 
Hermione is their kid. Hermione is their kid. This is not a drill. What the fuck? Harry could barely respond. This was the most beautiful young woman he had ever come across. So different from all the girls in public school who were focused on trying to be like career women they saw in Sex in the City. <laughs> is that really what 11 year olds are up to these days? This little one was the picture of innocence and godliness. We also know how great she is because the first thing she does upon entering the room is offer to help cook dinner. Which... I don't know why, because nobody cooked it, it's just there. At dinner, the adults talk about things that Harry doesn't quite understand. Dark forces. Intrigue, if you will. Chapter 4. I really want an internet historian version of this, now that I'm thinking of it, because I was reading the author's note and I just heard author's note in his voice and just... Chef kiss. Perfection. You look like you need a good night's sleep, the reverend's wife commented daintily. This is McGonagall, who I can assume probably also just looks like a southern housewife since we've given Dumbledore a complete makeover. How would you like to move into your dormitory? I would love to, Harry cried cheerfully. He was so excited to become a student here and he was so grateful for the opportunities the Lord had given him. Sometimes people who have done without are the most grateful. Grace Ann Parsons, master of subtlety. Hermione calls Dumbledore daddy. And then because she's so great and we are supposed to know that she is so great and just the ideal example of what a young girl is supposed to be, she offers to clean the kitchen. Which is again dumb because they just told her to go show Harry around so there's like no. When you gotta flex your housewife brainwashing against all logic. Am I right, ladies? In other news, women are obligated to be beautiful, to honor the Lord. Being beautiful on the outside is a testament to being a good Christian on the inside. Harry makes sure to be very nice and respectful to Hermione because every young woman is another man's future wife. Wait, Harry, Hermione uttered quickly. There's something you should know. What is it, Harry queried questioningly? Oh my god. These could be trolling nods to my immortal. I still believe there's absolutely no way to tell if this is a troll, given the amount of bullshit I have seen in the world that is meant completely seriously. But some potential evidence towards it being one is the... <laughs> The dialogue descriptors, i.e. that one iconic passage of my immortal. My father says dark times are coming, Hermione spoke worriedly. There is a man named Voldemort who wants to destroy all that we stand for. He is pushing an agenda in Congress which will stop us from practicing our faith freely. <laughs> but that's what the Founding Fathers built this nation for, Harry cried indignantly. The freedom of religion. This absolutely fucking sent me when I read it and it is fucking sending me now. Hermione sheds lovely ladylike tears over the persecution of Christians in modern day America, which but just by the way is absolutely the same as the persecution of Christians in ancient Rome. Things are also weirdly romantic rather than like innocent and friendshipy between Harry and Hermione, which is weird. They're literally children, can you not? This is not in my notes. I was just thinking this off the top of my head. I was gonna say, I'd be willing to bet that it ends with her giving him an innocent kiss on the cheek or them having a prolonged good Christian hug. But technically, I don't think there's an actual ending to this because it's it ends because her husband wanted her to stop writing it, so it, I don't think it'll have like a satisfying ending. But if it were to have a conclusion, I'm just saying they might share a good Christian hug despite the fact that Girl Defined says you shouldn't do that before marriage. Getting a little bit naughty there, don't you think? Chapter 5. Harry Potter woke up drowsily in a comfy fluffy mattress. It was only now that he had the energy to observe his surroundings. The room was small, but also everything a little boy needed. There was a big, warm fireplace in the grey stone wall across from him. A shelf of intelligent, age-appropriate books. The Holy Bible was in the center of the shelf, of course. In what universe is the Bible child-appropriate reading? So now we get to meet Ron, their roommates. So Harry wakes up and sees Ron praying to a statue, uh, which he just has a feeling is... bad. Come sit with me and my family, Ronald offered eagerly and motioned frantically towards a table packed full of people with hair, with hair just as red as his. Come on, come on, come on. I can't wait for them to see that I've made a new friend. Harry followed Ronald with the obedience of one who does not have many friends in a new situation. Oh, what a difficult circumstance that can be. And how many believers have been led astray by those situations. Guys, 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 Ronald screeched joyously as he pulled Harry towards the table of his family. This is Harry Potter and here's my new roommate. Hello, Harry, the Weasleys chorused in unison. Welcome to Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> There's something uncomfortable about them. 
and it's not the same reason we're all uncomfortable reading this. Their food appears again, but this time the implication is that like, like in the Harry Potter books, the house elves do all the cooking and then it is like teleported to the tables. I don't think they ever say that in the movies. So like context, if you only saw the movies and are confused, which is valid because I'd only saw the movies until this year. Um, <laughs> so this time the implication is that it's just McGonagall. It's it's McGonagall, do, like her role at the school is just to cook for the entire Great Hall and then it's teleported to the tables in the same way as I guess the house elves cook in the books. I don't know. <laughs> Harry decides to ask Dumbledore about the ethics of idolatry because you know, things that concern normal 11 year olds. Dumbledore wears cowboy boots, which are described as admirable. God, this woman is so horny for the Southern Hick aesthetic. Dumbledore then explains to Harry that the Sorting Hat will sort all of the students into, in the school into different types of Christians. For instance, I am a Gryffindor hat. We believe everything in the Bible and only the Bible. That redhead roommate of yours is a Slytherin hat. And Slytherins worship statues? Harry queried innocently. The Reverend nodded gravely. But do they really love the Lord? Harry posited timidly. If they do, then why do they worship statues? Dark days are coming, Dumbledore replied earnestly. We need to be inclusive. If there are only Gryffindor hats at Hogwarts, then there would not be many people left. Chapter 6. It is time for some more very accurate representation of the concerns of 11-year-old children. Harry and Ron have a friendly discussion about Gryffindors versus Slytherins. The Slytherins are the Roman Catholics, I gather. What about Mary? Ronald deposited angrily around a mouthful of oatmeal. You have to at least worship her. You mean the mommy of our lord? Harry demanded in scandal and chewed his bacon. I don't worship her, question mark. Well then, God hates you, Ron stated simply and pieces of bacon flew out of his mouth as he did so. I thought Harry was the one eating the bacon. And then Harry turns around and Luna is there eating vegan bacon, which is described as a bunch of gross vegetables mushed together and dyed red. I've never had vegan bacon, but I don't think that's it. Luna is obviously not a character in the first book, which could be evidence that this is written by a fan who knows more about the later books trolling. Same with the food doesn't magically appear, it is cooked by somebody thing. Maybe it's evidence that the Christian mom did some googling or watched the movies. I don't know. In My Immortal, there's a reference to St. Mungo's, and I, when I first saw that, I was like, aha! Nobody who's only seen the movies like the author claims she has knows what that is. Evidence that this is a troll! But like, or maybe she read a lot of Harry Potter fan fiction, some of which was written by people who did read the books, who mentioned things from the books, you know? I think too much about this stuff, and all I've, the only conclusion I've come to is that there is zero way to ever tell if something is a troll. Anyway, what do Hufflepuff hats believe in? Harry pondered aloud and took a bite of his real bacon. Hufflepuff hats believe in the Bible, but only some of it, Luna explained casually, and she was still feeding on that stuff. Why are y'all eating and talking? That's gross. <laughs> I'm just imagining them all like saying all of this with their mouths full, just spitting bacon everywhere. We don't believe in the stuff against fornication and drinking and socialism, but we really like Matthew 7, 1, and that's about it. We're really fun and seem really nice and really tolerant as long as you agree with us. That was when a derisive laugh echoed through the cafeteria. A smug looking young man about Harry's age with slicked back hair, even paler blonde than Luna's, was wearing a sweater vest and khakis, strolled languidly down between the rows of tables. Please ignore this fool, Draco drawled smugly. Luna here thinks she can have a career even though she's a woman and women are stupid. Harry gasped at this horrible person. What a mean thing to say. Women should not have careers because women are stupid. Harry shouted indignantly. Women are not stupid. Women should not have careers because women are nurturing and loving and their gifts, gifts serve them best in the home. <laughs> can you see me physically reacting to this? Can you see me holding down the vomit? Draco gasped tentatively. <laughs> My Jesus Christ. I maintain that there's no way to tell anything is a troll, but oh my god, this is really starting to feel like my immortal reference. Anyway, Draco gasped tentatively. You are diluting the truth. Wim women are beneath men. No, I'm not. Harry fired back bravely. You're twisting the truth so you can be mean with it. Women are not be beneath men. Men and women are just different. Luna smiled at him gratefully. Oh, we got a white knight on our hands, boys. Draco was clearly fumbling for ground here. There is not much ground to stand on when you are being hateful. But he finally came up with, well, at least I don't eat with Slytherin hats. I hate Slytherins. Ronald began to cry into his oatmeal. <laughs> I don't hate Slytherin hats, Harry declared boldly. I think they should become Gryffindor hats, but that is because I love them. Besides, the Lord ate with sinners all the time. 
I know we keep coming back to this even though I keep saying it doesn't matter and we'll never figure it out, but potential evidence that this is not a troll is that this woman knows nothing about Harry Potter. She keeps calling the houses house name hats and it's making me want to commit crimes. They literally all wear hats, like baseball hats with the house crest on them is what I'm picturing. I think that's what the- I think that's what she thinks the sorting hat is, because Harry literally jumps on a table and yells at God what house he wants to be in, and that's how he gets sorted, not with the hat that is used for sorting. He then gets a hat that says he's in Gryffindor. Also, almost none of the characters are in the right houses. Like, what is this ha Draco coming in like, I hate Slytherins, and then Ron, who is a Slytherin, grinds him to his oatmeal. Anyway, chapter seven. Um, the boys in Gryffindor get to wear hats with the, the Gryffindor lion on them, but the girls have to wear a version with a kitten on it. It's cool, that's great. These are things that I love having to read with my own two eyes. See, the joke I usually make is my own two good Christian eyes. She's, she's far out Christian, my good Christian eyes here. Hermione runs up and hugs Harry for no reason because apparently we've lapsed into an Onision book now. Dumbledore gets up in front of the school and he's like, cool, great, you've all chosen your houses wisely, which no, you didn't miss something. Apparently that all of the sorting is done now. And Harry is sitting there listening to him thinking, but is it really a smart idea for Dumbledore to act like people with other opinions are valid when they're not? Because like obviously only the Gryffindors who believe the entire Bible are valid and everyone else here is a sinner. I hate it. It's so gross. It's the sneaky, the, the, the sneaky little shit Christians do of like, oh, accept people and be nice to people and love everybody, but only for the sake of converting them because they're still bad. It is disgusting. It is vomit inducing. It is literally the opposite of genuine acceptance. Stop it. Now, at the beginning of the breakfast meal, Harry had noticed a tall, mysterious looking man with long dark hair and a gaunt, enigmatic features. He was dressed stylishly in a crisp black suit and his tie made a shock of red in the otherwise totally black outfit. Fashion icon. The dark hair on his pale chest was neatly trimmed but still noticeably thick and he wore elegant black leather shoes on both feet. It was now that he noticed that on the table that this man was sitting at was a placard that said on it, Mr. Snape. <laughs> a lot of things that I read in this fanfiction were a lot to handle, but for some reason Mr. Snape was the one that I just <laughs> started laughing uncontrollably at. My girlfriend was like, what are you, are you okay? Like, what, what are you looking, what is funny? And I was just like, I can't explain to you of all the things Mr. Snape just fucking sent me. I didn't realize, like in the books they're all called like Professor. So Professor Snape sounds completely normal to me. But Mr. Snape! <laughs> that is the end of chapter seven. Seven of the 14 chapters. We are halfway through, so I think that is the riveting cliffhanger. I think I'm going to have to leave you on until next week. I want to make a lot more book review videos because they're so fun, but they're also so tedious. So for the sake of my brain, I am dividing this up into two parts. In the meantime, have fun discussing any theories about whether it is a troll, any predictions for the future of this absolute train wreck in the comments below. I will be reading them and probably even including a few in the next video if they are particularly good and or make me cackle. Thank you so much for watching, friends, and I'll see you in another video, part two of this video next week.